Hi, welcome to Avioka. I'm Blue Nile, a musician, artist, and designer from Dublin. In recent years, I've found myself increasingly drawn to exploring, through my work, Irishness and aspects of Irish identity. I started sampling traditional music, writing lyrics in Irish, and linking with like-minded people through collaborations. I started to notice that I wasn't alone. In the cultural fields of Ireland, something very interesting is happening. Avioken, or Rebirth, is a radio show about a new Celtic revival, looking at the explosion of new Irish art forms, utilising Irish accents, Irish language, samples of Irish music and colloquialisms, along with the renewal of interest in Celtic practices and aesthetics in Ireland and beyond. The show features music and conversation, and each episode will focus on a theme. I wanted to speak to a forward-thinking, young Irish generation that's fed up with certain aspects of the country and its culture, but immensely proud of other aspects. People who don't speak Irish but would like to learn, who are interested in Celtic mythology, and also love global music such as hip-hop and underground club music. SBTV are running a series of six episodes of Abiokin to celebrate St. Patrick's Festival. This episode is called New Celtic Flow. It features an interview with the rapper C'est La Vida Mai and her manager Becca Maloney. We talked about the Irish hip hop scene, being female in the music industry in Ireland and what's next for the country. If you like what you hear, please follow me at blue underscore Nile underscore on Instagram or drop me an email at bluenileblue at gmail.com and subscribe to the mailing list via the link below. You can also keep in touch with my guests. I've dropped all their social profiles below and would highly recommend following these interesting creative people who I believe are going to shape the future of the country. Thanks so much for listening and I hope you enjoy. Gurmila Mahogan. Thanks Thanks so much for coming on the show, guys. Becca Maloney and Sayla Vida Mai. Really honoured to have you on here on Avyokan. Um, and just excited to, to get into it. Amazing. We're looking Thanks forward for to it. Us. For those who don't know you two, if you could um, please just give a bit of an intro background to yourselves, um, you know, where you've come from and what you're doing at the moment and, and maybe what, what you're even thinking next. Um, my name is Mai, a.k.a. Celebrated Mai, a.k.a. Celebrated Body, a.k.a. Galway's favourite. <laughs> um, I am a rapper, songwriter from Galway, and that's what I do. I perform and share good vibes. And my name is Becca. I'm first and foremost Celebrated Mai's manager, uh, but I'm also a music booker. Um, I programme lineups and things like that in certain spaces especially urban contemporary music um I'm also a mentor and booker for um acts and also here generally to share the good vibes and don't lie and she's a videographer and photographer <laughs> and PR and all the line those things she does everything so basically, she's the best. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're both slash people. Like you've got different <laughs> aliases and different skills that you're bringing to the table. Um, cool. So the main thing um, that's brought both of you here today is really um, the very special music of my. And yeah. I would just like to know, firstly, how would each of you um, maybe first... Um, Maya yourself and then Becca how would you describe my as an artist as an MC yeah well I would say the first thing that comes to mind when I listen to Sala Vida Maya's music is just versatility like you couldn't you couldn't just go oh yeah when I'm going to Maya's show I'm just gonna hear uh rap or I'm just gonna hear you know lo-fi lyrics or anything like that like it's a little bit of everything and like that's the whole story behind my and her music is that you can never just expect one thing like whether it's going between genres or vulnerability versus confidence you know um even in the way that she feels like her lyrics are always hitting on different things and her mood is brought out in different ways like a set by my will take you from you know fun and energetic singing along to like you know serious lyrics that you probably never imagine saying yourself but you feel comfortable when Mai's doing it <laughs> and yeah it's just generally uh really honest and versatile so Mai's not a faker like she's not going to talk about diamonds and hoes just for the sake of it like unless she genuinely really <laughs> has diamonds and hoes um you know it's real so not not every artist can say that but that's what how I would describe her. 
And basically what she said, because I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I kind of like think the same about myself. I think like my music is like a journey. It's not just like a stagnant, like one vibe type of thing. It's like a f- different emotions coming together as one and just vibes. Mm. <laughs> that's all I can say. So yeah. I think that's how I would describe myself. Just very versatile and different and just raw and honest I love that I love that because I think the versatility I definitely see that and but also the raw thing like what you said Becca about my saying things that we might be feeling but might not say them you know that's just as true of the kind of ratchet like out there lyrics um and that's yeah. as it is of the vulnerability and I, I think that's really powerful um for me and my music is that kind of bravery that honesty and just authenticity um, that makes her stand out. Um, cool. And recently, um, you know, part of the, the slash 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 abilities of Becca um, has led you <laughs> to create a documentary about Irish music. And yeah. um, also, I've had the amazing pleasure of working with you, Mai, on a song um, called New Celtic Flow. The song of the century. <laughs> yeah watch this thing. um both of these things are touching on this idea of a new sound in Ireland um mm-hmm. something something contemporary something that's happened is there a new sound emerging in Ireland and how does this sound relate to the country itself kind of historically culturally in 2022 well uh just to clarify, the documentary I made was a part of my emerging media masters that I did last year in DCU and me and two other amazing females decided to um, explore the topic of what is Irish music, can it be defined, and kind of putting the spotlight on females who have uh, contributed to the ever-changing ch- sound of Ireland. Mm-hmm. And because it was a master's, it was you know primarily also like a research thing where we had to academically look into it and the answer was that there is no one sound and you can't really define Irish music. It mm. kind of depends on like where you are, who you are and what way you're looking at it. Like, are you looking at it as like a label for a tourist? Like when we describe our sound traditionally, are mm. you talking about here, the people in Ireland who are making the music? Um, you know what I mean? Like it, it really does depend on the context. But our overall thing was, no, it can't be defined and it's an ever evolving thing. And it shouldn't really be defined anyway. So when we say Irish music, what we're really saying is music that was either made by Irish people or made in Ireland um, by anyone. Mm. And that it shouldn't be just one thing or just one sound. Uh, And then, you know, of course, we wanted to look at like the women who have contributed to it because unfortunately not all of women's contributions are as celebrated as men's or you know actually historically recorded during Mm. our studies we we found like really interesting stuff about how there were so many like women or like teachers or scholars or educators and researchers and stuff like that who contributed to music in ways that we don't always you know celebrate Mm. Uh, so it was was really interesting but yeah the answer is really that it it can't be defined and it is being evolved um a couple of the participants in our documentary kept saying things like you know we're going through a renaissance right now in music which I thought was really interesting and mm-hmm. um, I think that a lot of that stems from the pandemic and people just like having more time to like reevaluate themselves and what they want to do and maybe like have the time that they didn't have before to actually write that's the vibe right now I agree <laughs> <laughs> um I think um um I don't know do you think that there's a new sound emerging in Ireland? There definitely is. And I think it's also because there's so much of a variety right now. Whereas like when I started, there obviously wasn't. And I think people are like embracing the culture more or like us, like being Irish or like putting that into their music, even if they don't put it into their music, but just like standing firm as I'm an Irish artist, like I'm whatever doing my thing doing my thing so yes I guess but again like you said can't be defined so I don't know what the actual sound sound is is. yeah but I know we're proud of being Irish artists now whereas before I think people would want to like 
identify with being like say from like the UK or something like yeah. that whereas like I think our artists are way more proud of being Irish now yeah and like, like embracing amazing. accents and yeah and culture and like slang and, yeah. and that kind of a thing <laughs> and especially the Irish language obviously Nile that's something you're into but um I, I would say that it's evolving but it's going out and bringing stuff back into the Irish sound more than uh you know trying to like dig d- deep into our roots mm. if that makes sense mm. Um, yeah. yeah when I was trying to set up the show it was actually interesting because I, I really feel there's a renaissance right like I'm agreeing with um the people in your documentary Becca and I and I definitely uh, you know hope to be one of those people that Mai's talking about that's that's standing over the culture and kind of pr- trying to bring it in but when I tried to pin down what is the renaissance like what is the revival um it was hard to say any one thing because even stuff like accents there's been so much controversy in Irish hip-hop about what accents people are using whatever and then you have like a good points from people like Reggie saying like don't worry too much about the accents you know what I mean there's more important things that are there or whatever and also there's a multiplicity of accents in Ireland right now do you know what I mean that are all equally beautiful and valid ways of speaking but then when someone does bring on a very recognizably Irish accent, there's something interesting in that. And but it could be the accent, it could be the language, it could be, you know, we're we're sampling flutes on our on our tune of the century. You know, it could be part of the culture. It could be could be some, you know, it's 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 there's a lot of different things to bring in. Or even what I think you were maybe getting at there, Mai, as well, is like, you know, it doesn't have to be obvious then on the surface, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and maybe even Becca, that links to what you're saying about who is it for? Is it for us or is it for tourists? Because maybe we know where yeah. we're from, but you know what I mean? Are we actually, um, are we selling ourselves short or not? And that's kind of the key, the key question maybe. Yeah, well, I think that if we're looking at, you know, who is the sound for? Um, some people want to make, sounds and make music that appeal to others or Mm -hmm. staying with the times and then I think that a lot of the like successful Irish musicians are the ones who are just staying true to themselves Mm -hmm. and making the music that they want to make and like that would be one thing that you know like if anyone ever asks me do I have advice for artists or like what do I think about that I always say you know I wouldn't if if I had a musical bone in my body which I don't um she does not true true. (laughs) If I was making music, I know for sure that I would only be able to make music that is true to me and actually what I want to hear. And I know as well now that that's like why you started doing the like rap over trad music and stuff like that, because nobody else was. And you wanted to make that a thing in itself. Like I'd be the same. Like I wouldn't want to just be conforming to the music. I think Yeah, the music I think other people want to hear. Yeah. That's why I think like Saint Sister, for example, are like such amazing examples of that mm-hmm. because they bring in traditional elements and they definitely like almost all their music is about like very resounding Irish experiences Mm. and like specific Mm. names and towns and stuff like that but they still make it so unique and so like modern it's just it's such beautiful music um so yeah I think that there's ways to do it yeah yeah and on that I was gonna ask who is doing it like give me some tracks what you, you, each of you what's your kind of if you have four or five tracks even um to mind and we'll we'll, we'll play them on, on the show also that are um representing the best of of that kind of irish um music scene more broadly right now not to toot my own horn but i would say none better because i think that was like yeah my song none better. Yeah. i think that like was big for me anyway is that that's definitely your best song yeah and that was was that the first sorry am I going no oh sorry go ahead I was just gonna say was that the first time that you were uh rapping in Irish on that do you know what I actually rapped in Irish back in the days yeah but I obviously I removed a lot of my music from um socials and whatever and I used to just do freestyles yeah but I did before I did one and it was like based on like where I kind of well, I don't want to say where I grew up, but my estate and like the centra and all. So I, I did a rap then in Irish as well. But it's just something about the lockdown just inspired me to kind of like, you know, go into myself and like, you know, embrace all the different aspects of myself. So, so yeah, I would say like in recent times, 
that was one of my songs. You should have known better. Still, I be the baddest bitch, and yeah, she a go getter. Uh, you should have known better. Sell as a go getter. Uh, 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 I love Chris Rich. I'm a big like Sally, you get tossed. Piss me off, none of the look like Kate Moss. We're not friends, I swear I do you like Rachel the Ross. Like, Nemo, you get lost. Man, claim to be like Ramsey, cause they play for a team that nobody knows, like, nobody bro, like, nobody knows, like, nobody bro, like, nobody knows. Uh, it's Michelle Kion, it's Michelle Fane, it's Michelle only. When your nigga bored of you, yeah, he might phone me. I keep it low key, nobody knows me. Say the most broski. Uh, see, I don't wanna start in a fight, but I hit you in the left and the right. Make your only fans dead, catch fights. Get a body and then get pipe. Oh my dad's life, keep a check like Nike. Oh my dad's life, cross my heart, swear to die. You should've known better. Still, I be is the baddest bitch, and yeah, she a go getter. You should've known better. You should've known better. The rap and hip hop climate in Ireland is like really, really strong at the mm. moment. Like, there's honestly so many acts now, um, and it's great to see more females coming through. Like, mm -hmm. there definitely needs to be a space for more of them, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, it can be hard to break into, you know, this scene if you don't have a team of people around you, especially, or like if you don't have an in. Mm. Um, but in addition to like the kind of rap and hip hop scene, I, I love, um, I think we have a huge array of electronic musicians in Ireland that mm. are just so amazing. Like, um, Wastefellow is one of my favorite kind of electronic yeah. artists. Um, and we're big fans Bobby of Bobby Arlo. Bobby Arlo. <laughs> she's amazing. I love Bobby. Um, I not like not we're not just trying to list our friends here but like we also love Nilo yeah Ben Bix yes Sim Sim are amazing as mm -hmm. well um Nigar on Pacto they're new artists coming on the scene Alicia um, Rain I love yeah, Alicia yeah. Sure, 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 sure. there's so many um there's a lot just so many that you can't like before when you want to list the artists you'd be like oh yeah the one or two or three but yeah, now there's, now like there's, there's just list so people. many yeah and there's I always so I always notice that like whenever I go on to Spotify, you know, when they give you like your six daily mixes, like yeah. kind of they're usually based on a genres or whatever. I have, I always have at least a couple of Irish artists pushed mm. to me in every single category, like mm. singer songwriter, you know, indie stuff. And mm. then like the DJs electronic and then the hip hop rap, etc. Yeah. Like, and it just goes to show that even Spotify can push to me artists Irish. in all of those different mm -hmm. genres that are from Ireland and it doesn't have to be oh if it's like grime or drill or hip-hop like that it's mm -hmm. only going to come from UK acts or you know yeah. like alternative like they're not going to be like some cool old band in Canada like mm -hmm. we have that here too so I think that that's deadly. Have you so both of you like um lyrical music right like Becca you're yeah. a genius you know probably could have created the rap site genius with 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 um, <laughs> rap lyrics and Maya I know you're a big um J. Cole fan right and you like that kind of lyrical side um <laughs> I don't know I can't remember if you told me or Becca told me or if I saw an interview but I know it. it's in my head somewhere but um have you felt moved I think I saw a conversation a few years ago can't remember where, but on some of the Irish hip hop media, people were talking and they were saying like, there's tunes, but like how many tunes actually are moving you and really like touching something deep inside lyrically or, you know, emotionally, like, and I'm curious mm. to just put that one to both of you as kind of, you know, lyrical scholars as it were um what, you know what, what have the, have you had that moment with an Irish song yet? And if so, which, which one? was an Irish song yeah I have but I don't know if it was actually the lyrics or more so like the delivery of it but yeah. I I I keep saying them but Saint Sister have a song called Any Dreams and I'm pretty sure it's the closing song of their most recent album and the first time that I heard that I actually did cry a little bit because right. it just like builds up to this moment where um I think Morgana just says over and over again, um, I just can't keep up. Mm -hmm. And it's just like so powerful. Um, there's also there's a, also a Kojak song that whenever I listen to it, 
I low key am like really emotional because he's just like it, it's just it's just kind of like a slow and sad song but like mm. everything that he's saying just hits you know mm. when you're listening to it and you're like mm. that's it like, you know? <laughs> um and yeah there's uh, yeah you know um new sense uh yeah. Genova and a few other lads make up new sense they're an amazing collective of people mm. they're music and their lyrics are cl- so clever and just like there's one song Shiv performed yeah at Nilo's gig I oh, can't Shiv, remember the yeah. song now Shiv but also. there was one song oh my god is like, it letting you know I don't know but when she sang that I she was like is I incredible. was almost in tears yeah that's so actually so powerful. true it was crazy like I think everybody was actually gonna cry yeah. like so many people beside me were like <gasps> and I was like letting you know and hold me I are two like I can't remember the song that but I have it on my phone because I re- recorded yeah. it but I'll figure out what the song yeah, is called yeah Shiv Shiv is whoa yeah she's serious yeah. lyricist yeah so yeah that's, I mean there's a lot that's amazing though because that's the cycle continuing right it's like the genesis of the rappers that we heard when we were younger you know from across yeah. the Atlantic or, or wherever that kind of gave us this lifelong love that we're still exploring now like I hope that there will be young people and children in Ireland that hear you know some of the homegrown music and having that same experience and be really interesting to see what they create you know what I mean when they are in our position and and starting to starting to write and make their own work (laughs) from the kind of front of the process I want to go behind the scenes a little bit um so I had the pleasure of working with the two of you um, I'm working with you, Becca, on the tune that we're releasing, right? And you're somebody that just exudes uh, wisdom and calm <laughs> and kind of, you know, just everything that, you know, it was probably, you know, one of my first experiences um, being around a really, really solid manager um, yeah. in, the, in the Irish scene anyway. Um my firstly I'd love to hear from you and like how I know you have a lot of love for Becca and if you could just tell us a little bit about why like what how would you describe Becca as a manager and what she does for you and how important is that kind of behind the scenes work in bringing Ireland into the spotlight as far as homegrown hip-hop um in this country I just want to say first of all disclaimer um Becca is hiring right now thank you so (laughs) much everybody y'all lost I won (laughs) haha But um, <laughs> um, jokes aside, I think, see, I've been through my like mm, fair share of managers that haven't really been attentive and as hands on as Becca. So when you meet someone like Becca, it's very rare because I, I don't I think I've like a lot of artists I do talk to their managers aren't the way Becca is. It's very rare to have that because not only do we have like a business relationship we also have like a solid true friendship and she doesn't just care about my music which obviously everybody wants someone to care that, about their music but also like my mental health and stuff like that and I think anyone who is an artist would know that you go through very weird um mental phases when you're an artist because one day you could be like super open be like I really believe in my music and da 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 and tomorrow you could be like yo delete the whole archive <laughs> on Spotify we're done we're done today get rid of it so like having someone who genuinely cares about you on both spectrums is very important because as well like you don't believe in yourself every day but having someone believe in your dream as much as you believe in your own dream just helps you elevate to like the next stage you know like so when I'm down that goes up and it means that we're still Mm -hmm. going somewhere you know Mm -hmm. so I want to say that that is like the most important thing to have as an artist because I'm telling you, you can't do everything yourself. And if you're someone that's doing everything, like say your PR, your emails, the admin, the bookings and whatever, all yourself, it takes away from your creativity Mm -hmm. and you don't have enough time to think. And we also have to be realistic. Being an artist in Ireland, it's not as luxurious as people make a scene. You still have to work your nine to five. You still have to do all these things to like, you know, get by on life. And if you're doing that and you're also trying to create music and you're also trying to do your PR, also trying to network, it's really hard so I'm gonna say now and I facts on facts on facts I'm the luckiest artist in Ireland I don't care what anybody says Mm -hmm. bring your manager and bring mine we will compare right now I'm gonna tell you the (laughs) truth I'm the luckiest one (laughs) big flex big brag I'm just gonna say right now so like I just 
I'm genuinely so grateful because Becca has done more for me in the year than anyone has ever done in my whole life. And I'm not even like joking, like obviously aside from my mom, because my mom gave birth to me, but <laughs> other than that, like genuinely she puts her heart and soul into everything she does. And I don't know, like sometimes I wonder like, is she real? Like, is she an alien or what? Cause like <laughs> the way she's so organized, it's insane. And she still manages to have her life in order. Like, obviously like we are we're all going through something it's the freaking lockdown everyone has their own mental things going on but becca like the way she keeps it together and she works so hard and she's just a genuine kind oh, person that's so... <laughs> <Don't cry>. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a genuine person it's very hard to come across because i think a lot of people when they get into the music industry their main aim is i want to make money from this like i want to mm. like you know get clout and do all these things just to like um further myself but like whatever Becca does for herself, she always thinks of me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's very rare for someone to be like, okay, I need to see how I can like fit my into this. I need to see how this could benefit my as mm. well. I'm Blue Nile and this is Ravi Okun. In creating this show, I worked with some of my favorite people and we had lots of extra content. I decided to split the interview in this episode into two parts. The rest will be aired in my regular slot in Dublin Digital Radio and through my Instagram. If you want to keep in touch, drop your email in the link below this video. Thank you so much for listening. Gurmila Magad. August Berg. August Berg. August Berg. August Berg. I just lay low, I can't lay back I'm my anxious boy since it was way back And I lost my youth, I wanna way back And the walls to be, I wanna break that All the fakeness, I don't play that Hit the ways that they chat Try to pull me on the same track no way, lad. Lila Khalin, she a kahav. Nila Sago, Fuin Gadrev. Khame Glita, Ima Khola, Kula Mila. Solar Stope, mate. Nama Kita. Augustosa, Lanadina. Toshi Lofa, B. McDowsa. Glocka Shota, Kula Bangers. Saksa Pota. B. McDowsa, Egg and Fla. Chris, she catches her, my shot. Aaron, August, me around. She extorted me a grand. Toshi Tap, Toshi Shan.